Prinhang Da, good afternoon and thank you for joining our webinar to present the findings and decisions of our latest Qualified for the Future consultation. I'm Claire Roberts and I work in the Communications and Engagement team at Qualifications Wales. We're also hosting a Welsh language session tomorrow at 11 o'clock. I'm joined by my colleagues Emma George and Catherine Verrill who will take you through the decisions. We welcome contributions in the chat box as we go and will attempt to answer your questions throughout the presentation. If we don't manage to respond, please include your name and email and we will get back to you shortly. There'll also be an opportunity at the end of the presentation for questions and answers and Emma and Katrin will be taking that. Next slide, please. Our aim today is to present the findings and decisions of our latest Qualified for the Future consultation that ran between January and April earlier this year. We had over 1,500 responses and the majority of the responses, as you can imagine, came from teachers and education stakeholders. 10% of responses also came from learners. We'd like to thank everyone for their responses. It's really shaped our thinking and decision making. There are two main parts to this event. The first part will focus on the decisions we've taken following our last consultation on the range of subjects in which we'll be co-constructing new GCSEs. The second part will give an overview of the qualification journey we are on and where we're going next. Our board confirmed these decisions and this is an opportunity to have a chance to understand the decisions, why we've taken them and what they mean. And of course, it's a chance for you to ask questions about our plans and look at how we can work together effectively moving forward. So without further ado, I'll now hand over to Emir. Emir, Dioch. Dioch Katrin from Hand Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, the decisions that we've announced today are focused on the range of subjects in which brand new GCSEs um, will be created. Uh, these decisions are based on the second consultation that we've undertaken as part of our work on reforming qualifications for the new curriculum for Wales. Following our first consultation way back last year, we agreed the guiding principles that should shape the qualifications available to learners aged 14 to 16. These are that the qualifications available should clearly relate to and support the curriculum for Wales, be available bilingually, and give schools and learners a coherent and inclusive choice that offers something for everyone, wherever they are on their learning journey. We also agreed after that last cons consultation last year that we should keep the GCSE name, the brand, if you like, but that the qualifications that, are, that we've currently got for GCSEs will need to change, potentially quite significantly, with new content and assessment to reflect the new curriculum for Wales. So, as I said, today we're confirming the range of subjects in which these new GCSEs should be created. And these decisions are very much the starting point of an exciting phase of this work where we'll work with others uh, to agree that the key features of these new qualifications. And as we've been uh, finalising the decisions that we're announcing today, we've also been getting ready to take forward that next phase, uh, which aims to give stakeholders a strong and central voice in reshaping the qualifications taken by 14 to 16 year olds in Wales. <clears throat> and we will come on and talk about the decisions in a moment, but I just want to say a little bit about, about that next phase of work. So there are two main aims that we're, we're looking to achieve. The first, again, very much building on the co-constructive approach that Welsh Government used to develop the new curriculum. We want to work with others to reimagine a whole new generation of GCSE qualifications for Wales. And in a way, that's a sort of sub part of an even bigger uh, ambition, which is again working closely with others, looking at what the shape of the whole qualifications offer for 14 to 16 year olds should be like. What are all of the qualifications that will be needed to make sure that there's something there for everyone? As we start to look at the design of new GCSEs, we want to explore innovative approaches to their content and to their assessment so that these new GCSEs will help learners to realise the curriculum for Wales purposes, 
so that they'll be designed to be as engaging as possible for learners and to support their mental health and well-being. We also want to give schools more flexibility to reflect their own school curriculum and to give learners more choice about what and how they study. We also think this is a great opportunity to make better, more effective use of digital technology and assessment to enhance the experience of learners and to build more resilience in how qualifications are delivered. Again, I just want to emphasise that piece of work on looking at what the wider offer, the wider qualifications offer should include. And now that we've made these decisions about the range of GCSE subjects that should be available, we can really get going with that work to look at all the qualifications in this space from entry level up across all subject areas, included those relating to the world of work, that is vocational qualifications. And we don't want to prejudge what will come of that collaborative work with stakeholders on the wider offer, but we do expect that the, the range of qualifications that will be available in the future will include a mix of existing qualifications and new ones, some qualifications that are bespoke made for learners in Wales, other qualifications that are available UK wide. Looking at the time frame for this work and, and why it is that we're, we're looking now to, to, to work with others and to get the input we need to shape these qualifications, um, we're working to the, qualification, uh, to the timeline for introducing the new curriculum. Um, and many of you will know, I'm sure, that the new curriculum is starting next September in 2022 for all learners from year six and below. Secondary schools have got a little bit of flexibility about when they introduce the new curriculum. They can either, either do that next year for year seven learners, or they can have an extra year and then bring the curriculum in for all learners in year seven and eight in 2023. Either way, come September 2025, the first learners to have experienced the new curriculum for Wales will be starting in year 10. And they'll be completing their GCSEs and other qualifications in the summer of 2027. So that's the focus of our planning in terms of this year. If you look at the right hand side of this timeline, you'll see that we are focused on protecting that all important preparation time for schools and for teachers to get familiar with any changes to qualifications well before they have to start teaching them. And that's a really important lesson that we've learned from from previous qualification reforms. So that's a key part of our planning. If you then look over at the um, move left, so you'll see that we're aiming to have any new and different qualifications in place by, by the summer of 2024, so that there is that full year to allow for planning and preparation um, at school level. If you look at the far left of the timeline, um, another lesson that we've learned from, from previous reforms here in Wales and looking internationally is, is how vitally important it is that change is done collaboratively across the system with effective dialogue to explore what needs to change, how and crucially why it needs to change. So we're really looking in this academic year to involve as many voices as possible to get the thinking right on how these new qualifications will be taught and assessed and what they'll be like for learners. We know this is a challenging time frame and this is far from an ordinary academic year with all the pressures in the system continuing from the pandemic and also the, the need to to make up for all the lost time from the past two years. So we will be keeping a close eye on this timeline as we progress through this work. And next summer, we'll take stock and we'll plan very carefully for what needs to be in place by 2025. And we'll look at whether anything can come in a little bit later to ensure that we're planning for things to be introduced and implemented successfully. So that's all I wanted to say initially about where we are and uh, where we're going next. I know you want to hear more about the decision, so I'll pass now over to Katrin, who will explain a little bit about how we've taken these decisions and the reasons behind them, and then she'll talk you through the main decisions and the subject that we think will be needed. Katrin, over to you. Catherine, I think you're on mute. Hi, is, is, does that work? 
That works. Yep. That's great. Thanks, Catherine. Oh, I unmuted and muted. I think it was just a bit slow. So I'll start again. Um, um, just to say, pronoun the half bowb at the Alchemir. We consulted on 23 um, proposals um, and had a good response rate, as Claire mentioned um, in the beginning, with just over 1,500 responses. And most proposals were met with a good level of support and agreement. Um, but irrespective of the level of support, uh, we carefully analysed all the qualitative responses for each proposal to really understand people's views um, and to identify potential um, issues for further consideration. Um, a, a point that was raised by many respondents um, and was a recurring theme uh, in relation to several of the qualification proposals uh, was qualification size. Um, so. In the consultation, we um, explicitly referred to qualification size in relation to some of our proposals. And this was essentially to illustrate what a new qualification um, could look like in comparison to its current equivalent and to indicate how this could influence the manageability of the qualification offer as a whole. So, for example, um, an integrated GCSE mathematics and numeracy qualification wouldn't need to be as big as the two separate GCSEs currently available because the overlap and duplication in terms of content and assessment would be uh, eliminated. Uh, however, some respondents uh, were concerned that reducing the size of a qualification would lead to a, a dilution of the subject um, and or uh, lead to um, a reduction in teaching time. And on reflection, uh, we feel that we weren't as clear as we could have been around the proposed size of the qualifications in the consultation, which then, of course, led to um, some misgivings um, amongst respondents. So in an attempt to clarify uh, our position in relation to qualification size, we have emphasised in our decision re uh, report that we are not definitively fixing the ultimate size of any new qualification at this stage. And that will depend um, on what the agreed content and assessment model uh, will be. However, we also know that it will be important for colleagues and stakeholders to have an idea of how much content and experience to include uh, in their proposals. So as we transition into the next stage of our work, we will indicate the intended size of each new GCSE just to help guide those who will be working on the qualification. But then once we've worked with stakeholders to develop, test and agree new high level um, content and assessment arrangements to inform approval criteria, we will then take a further view on the um, overall size of each new qualification. Um, and then just before confirming the uh, decisions, I'm just going to give you um, a, a quick overview of a couple of the key principles that informed um, and influenced the decisions that have been made so that you have an idea of the context in, uh, within which we've been um, working. Um, and the first um, key principle was around qualifications to serve and support the new curriculum. So as we began to consider the implications of this curriculum led reform on qualifications, we wanted to be clear that the curriculum should shape which qualifications are available, their purpose and their design, not the other way around. So we know that the new curriculum requires a school's curriculum to be broad and balanced and reflect the six um, AOLEs, which are, of course, of equal importance. So in making our decisions, uh, we carefully considered the need to reflect the ethos of the new curriculum, including its aim of moving away from that sort of narrow, inflexible and crowded curriculum um, and secure a broad and balanced range of subjects within and across the six areas. Uh, our decisions are aimed at getting the right mix of qualifications in each area to allow schools to reflect the breadth and balance of their school curriculum in the combinations of qualifications um, available to learners. So we also want to free up time within the curriculum for meaningful um, teaching and learning. And while we consulted on each proposal separately, uh, they are and should continue to be seen as part of a package. 
Um, and then one of the other key principle um, principles was learners at the heart of our reform. Um, and one of our principal aims um, here is to ensure that qualifications and the Welsh qualification system are effective for meeting the reasonable needs of learners in Wales. And this means putting learners in Wales at the heart of everything we do, which is what we did um, as we worked through the consultation responses and then in making the decisions. So moving to the decisions uh, then and starting uh, with the expressive arts. Um, so we are proceeding with all the proposals that were in the expressive arts AOLE. However, we are going further than what we proposed in the consultation with the dance um, proposal. So in addition to taking steps to secure the continued availability of bilingual qualifications that assess dance, we're proposing that we work with stakeholders to develop approval criteria for a made for Wales dance qualification. And this may or may not be um, a, a GCSE. This has not been de uh, decided at this um, stage, but respondents put forward a very strong case for developing a Wales um, specific qualification. So when we start developing uh, the qualification requirements, we'll look at ways of trying to make the qualification viable uh, to increase the likelihood that awarding bodies will want to develop um, a qualification for Wales. And then for the health and well-being, uh, we're proceeding again with both proposals uh, here. Um, so there was general support for our proposal not to create a new qualification to support the delivery of the whole of this area, with many respondents saying that one overarching qualification to assess this broad area would present um, significant assessment challenges at a national um, level. And many respondents felt that this um, could have a narrowing um, and negative effect on teaching and learning. Um, we're proceeding with two of the three proposals that we had uh, in the humanities um, area. So there will not um, be a new GCSEs in human a GCSE sorry in humanities at this stage. So opinions um, on this proposal were divided, with just over um, half of respondents not in favour of introducing a new integrated GCSE in humanities. However. While we've taken the decision not to publish approval criteria for an, for an integrated humanities GCSE by 2025, uh, we're not ruling out introducing such a qualification in the future. So we will review the case for uh, an integrated GCSE in humanities as the new curriculum becomes uh, embedded. Moving on then to maths and numeracy. Um, Oh, I can see, however, that languages uh, uh, and literacy and communication have come first. So I'll 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 go start with uh, languages. So with regards to languages, uh, literacy and communication, AULE, uh, there will be a new integrated language and literature GCSE for English. We are, however, reserving our decision on all Welsh language um, proposals. Uh, and we will confirm in January 2022 uh, the choice of Welsh language uh, qualifications that should be available to support the, the, the new curriculum for Wales. We're reserving our decisions on all of the Welsh qualifications because they're all tied together and we need to review them as a whole because making changes to one could impact uh, the others. In the meantime, however, we will work with stakeholders to review our original proposals along other potential options to make sure the changes are as, uh, as effective as possible in supporting Welsh Government's policy on the Welsh language um, in, uh, in education. Um, moving on then to international um, language and British Sign Language. Um, so there will be new GCSEs in French, German and Spanish. And there will also be a new set of small qualifications in a range of international languages to encourage that sort of wider uh, engagement with language learning. Uh, there will also be a new Made for Wales British Sign Language qualification. However, as with the dance, we'll be going further than the proposal in the consultation. 
um, and we will work with stakeholders to set and then publish approval criteria for a made for Wales British Sign Language qualification um, and work with any interested uh, awarding body to develop a qualification to meet uh, our requirements. And as with a dance qualification, it may or may not end up being um, a GCSE. That will uh, yeah, that is yet to be determined. So hopefully um, we've got maths um, coming up again now. So moving on to maths and numeracy. Um, and just to say that we are taking all three proposals forward here. So there will be a new integrated maths and numeracy um, GCSE um, and then two new made for Wales qualifications that can be taken in addition to the GCSE and they are a digitally um, assessed qualification that focuses on numerical proficiency and also a level two qualification in additional um, mathematics. And then in the science and technology area, um, so we can confirm that there will be new GCSEs in computer science, uh, the built environment, design and technology, digital technology and then engineering and manufacturing. There will also be a new integrated GCSE science double award qualification to replace the existing science uh, GCSEs. So um, it's also worth saying that we did consider developing an additional set of science qualifications, uh, which was the sort of fourth proposal in, uh, in this area, in this consultation. However, in light of uh, consultation respondents' feedback and then following conversations we've had with key stakeholders since then, including um, the, the learned societies, we feel that the priority should be to develop a common GCSE qualification that covers biology, chemistry and physics at this stage and get uh, that right. But we will further explore what other made for Wales qualifications are needed in this area to supplement the common GCSE science as part of our work to reshape the wider 14 to 16 qualification offer uh, that Emir uh, mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, and then to finish, we are also proceeding with a proposal in relation to the integral skills. So the current skills challenge certificate will be replaced with a, a simpler and more manageable qualification to assess uh, the integral skills. So those are the decisions uh, that have been taken and are included in our decisions report, which was published today. Uh, and now I'll hand um, back to Emir. Dear Catherine, sorry, my mute button was just sticking there. Um, so we will come to your uh, questions in a moment. We are we are endeavouring to answer them as we go. Uh, there were just a couple of things I wanted to um, emphasise. Obviously, today's decisions uh, have focused on new GCSEs, but as I was saying earlier, we are very much uh, wanting to look at the whole um, qualifications offer for 14 to 16 year olds. Um, and we are pressing ahead with that work to gather views on what the key features and components of that overall um, wider qualifications offer should include. Uh, next week, we'll be launching two online surveys, one for learners and, and a more general one to start gathering views on uh, what people want to see in that offer to make sure that it is inclusive and that it does meet the needs of all learners. So do please uh, keep an eye out for that, share it. And of course, most importantly, please do respond and let us know your thoughts. Um, and then a few other uh, words just on uh, the work that we'll be taking forward now to co-construct the uh, content and the um, assessment for these new GCSEs. Um, you know, there is a great deal yet to be discussed, to be explored and to be decided. We don't have any prefixed ideas about uh, what the content and assessment of these new GCSEs should be like. Um, what we do want to see is that uh, qualifications have uh, the content, uh, 
that will best reflect the, the, the curriculum for Wales, that will support effective teaching and, and give learners the most engaging and worthwhile learning experiences uh, to help them move forward post-16. We'll be looking at what the right balance is for each subject uh, of knowledge, skills and experiences, and we expect that to be different as you look from one subject to the next. And similarly, we want to see uh, and agree, discuss, explore uh, what proportion of the, the content required in a qualification should be fixed. Uh, or optional to allow a school to reflect its school curriculum and also to, to allow for some learner choice to reflect their preferences. And again, that's likely to vary from one subject to the next. We're also very interested in looking at different kinds of assessment model. We're not saying that, you know, that everything has to be assessed by exam, far from it. We want to learn from the different ways that, that um, schools have had to um, respond to, to, to the cancellation of exams over the last couple of years. And again, for each subject, we're interested in trying to find the right balance, what the right mix is of different assessment methods, be that coursework or exams or project based work. We also want to look at where digital, te digital technology and digital assessment can come in and open up new ways for learners to show what they're capable of, what they know and what they can do. And as we do that work and as we work with stakeholders to explore those ideas, we'll also um, be taking a look in the round at the emerging thinking and the emerging ideas for these new GCSEs. Because we, we obviously need to be mindful about the manageability of these new qualifications. We need to make sure that they're accessible um, and within reach for all schools and learners. We'll have to look at the progression that learners will be making who've taken these qualifications to make sure that they support post-16 pathways and all the different choices that learners can make at 16. We also want to have an eye on diversity and inclusivity and we want to make sure that these qualifications reflect and meet the needs of the diversity of learners in Wales. Um, and another, another point, I, I made it earlier but I'll make it again, we do want to look at how qualifications are designed uh, with learner mental health and well-being firmly in mind so that they have the most positive experience possible um, and are able, able to show the full potential of, of what they can do. Those are just a few of the many different considerations that will be in the mix as we move into this next stage um, to explore just what might be possible and how we might do things differently. And just lastly, um, I've talked a lot about collaboration and co-construction today. So we're putting in place a comprehensive model to try and make that happen. We're going to have separate working groups for each of the subjects uh, that we're taking forward as new GCSEs and we'll have one looking at the, the new skills qualification to come in um, to replace the, the current skills challenge certificate, as well as engagement groups to look at the wider offer work I've mentioned. And each of these different groups will include a mix of teachers, uh, subject and assessment experts. And the idea is that these working groups will work to generate questions and proposals and to seek regular feedback throughout this year from a much broader range of stakeholders. And they'll be organised into six networks reflecting the six areas of learning of the new curriculum. They'll be working virtually, digitally uh, and looking at regular stages in, in, in um, short cycles at the questions and the ideas coming up from the subject groups offering feedback, offering input, helping to shape the thinking, helping to debate the ideas that will ultimately allow us to put forward proposals for um, uh, the aims, the content and the assessment of these new qualifications. And then sitting across the whole piece will be a, another wider sort of strategic stakeholder reference group. We'll be looking at some of those cross-cutting issues and questions I mentioned just now around manageability, progression and the like. Uh, and just finally, there are plenty of opportunities for anybody with an interest to get involved with this work at different levels. So we're currently looking for expressions of interest uh, from individuals or organisations who want to help play a part in shaping these new qualifications. And if you want to know more, then please go to our website and th there's different ways that you can fill in 
a form to express your interest to, to get involved and to make a difference. We're looking for teachers and lecturers to help um, take forward the work of those subject level groups. And we're looking for anybody with an interest in this work to join those wider um, areas of learning and experience networks where you'll have a, a direct opportunity to, to shape the thinking and to help uh, move things forward uh, with your views. So that really is it from us now on today's decisions. I hope uh, it's helped to explain a little bit about the thinking behind what we've announced today and given you a sense of the exciting opportunities that lie ahead, as well perhaps as the scale of the ambition of, of what we're heading into. So thank you very much for listening. Um, I'm sure there's lots of questions. I've seen some of them coming in as I've been speaking to you. Uh, so I'll hand over to Claire now, who can uh, lead us through an opportunity to, to answer some of those. Thanks, Emir. Yeah, I'll be handing back for you to answer them, but I'll ask a couple of questions from the, the chat. So a question here is, how are these GCSEs future focused? How are they preparing children for a complex world? Excellent question. Um, and in many ways, you know, that's one of the, the, the questions and the challenges that we will want to explore with, um, with stakeholders, with teachers, with learners and others as we move into this next stage. Um, one of the ways is we've talked about digital technology. We're not only thinking there about the opportunities um, which that offers us in terms of how we do assessment and how assessment is delivered, but also in terms of the content of some of these qualifications. Digital technology is transforming the way in which um, we uh, study and work in different fields in our, in our everyday lives. And we think it's right that we look at what that means in terms of what and how learners should be studying these different subjects as they're going through school. So there's plenty of opportunities there from, from that point of view. And I think another, another opportunity that we have that we want to pursue in looking again at these qualifications is um, how the content across the different subjects can be developed so that um, learners are encouraged as far as possible to make those connections and those links with other parts of the curriculum in just the same way as the curriculum itself is developed and designed to try and uh, encourage that. Lovely, thanks. Another question on the English um, and can you give a little bit more clarity on why we decided to go with the proposal? I might ask Katrin to answer that one. Thank you. Are you still with us Katrin? I think the mute button's playing up. I think it may still be you, Emmett. Oh, I can come in. No, yeah. I think we might. Oh, yeah, if you can uh, take that, okay. I mean, please, I that'd be great. I, she just sent me a message to say that her mute button is completely stuck. Yeah. So, uh, no, I'm happy to answer it. So, you. Uh, the thinking there is we we took as our starting point um, what's in the curriculum and the, the, there are four um, different statements of what matters in, in the languages area of the curriculum and it makes very clear that you know literature is part and parcel of uh, the way in which we want learners to uh, develop their their proficiency and their experience of language um, and so the, the proposal here reflects that that um, intention that you know, language and literature uh, are very closely linked. In fact, they're different facets of the same subject area. Uh, one is the context for the other and vice versa. Um, and so, you know, this is an opportunity to make sure that all learners are experiencing and engaging with literature and language all the way to 16. And as we've said more generally about our decisions today, we are looking to try and um, make an opportunity across the range of subjects available for there to be a little bit more scope for schools and for learners to put together combinations of, of qualifications that reflect the full breadth of the curriculum. And so by combining and integrating qualifications in closely related subject areas, that is one way in which we can try to achieve that. Lovely. 
I've got three more, th another three questions that have come in. So what level tiers will the maths digital qualification be pitched at, please? Really good question. So what we've said is that we wanted to try and focus in at uh, proficiencies around that uh, grade C boundary that we currently have in GCSEs. Um, we've deliberately not pinned down what level that qualification will be in terms of level one, level two at this stage to allow a bit more um, scope for working with, with stakeholders to explore the precise uh, way in which we want to develop that qualification. So um, once I think we've clarified precisely what that qualification is for and looked at the different options for the kind of content, the kind of proficiencies it could target and how it will assess those and what learners will be required to demonstrate through that combination of content and assessment, we'll then take a view at what the most appropriate level it would be to describe that qualification. We know generally what we want it to do and, and what we want it to offer to learners, um, but there are lots of opportunities there and lots of ideas we want to be able to explore um, as we look at that in more detail. So uh, it's uh, to be determined, I guess. Lovely. Another question. Many pupils are not necessarily minded to choose performing arts subjects at GCSE. Will they have to sit a qualification in that area? Oh, really good question. So what we're talking about today is the range of, of GCSE subjects that should be available. Um, it's not our responsibility, if you like, to, to say which qualifications any given learner should take or indeed any, any given school should offer. And the um, curriculum framework that, that schools need to follow when they're designing their own curriculum uh, doesn't talk about which qualifications should be available and which qualifications learners should take. So the requirement is that learners, um, I might not get the specific wording right here, but the gist is that learners um, are expected to take forward meaningful learning across all six areas of the curriculum, which includes expressive arts, all the way through to 16. Um, but there won't be a requirement that learners take a qualification in each area of learning and experience. Um, and that, again, I think reflects some of the ethos behind our decisions today. We're not putting these qualifications out there expecting that um, learners, all of learners' time when they're in that 14 to 16 space will be taken up with uh, pursuing qualifications. I think if the, qualific if the curriculum is going to achieve what it's setting out to do, then I think we can expect to see a bit of a, a redressing of the balance in terms of um, how learners time and learning and teaching time in schools relates to the qualification that learners are taking and, and what they leave school with at 16. Uh, interesting one here. Um, in our school, around a third of pupils um, currently opt to do triple award. How does this um, proposal cater to those children? Well, the proposal that we're taking forward today for sciences is that we're looking to uh, simplify and integrate the current suite of uh, science GCSEs and to bring in um, a single um, common route, if you like, as far as qualifications are concerned through the sciences, uh, where there'll be a double award GCSE science. And that's what we're going to take forward as part of this work to co-construct a new suite of GCSEs. We have said in our decisions that um, as part of that work I was mentioning to look at the wider qualifications offered that will look specifically at um, whether and if so what other qualifications may be required in that space to cater to the full uh, range of learners and that may be things that um, are needed for learners who might find it difficult to access uh, a double award GCSE as well as qualifications that may be required to uh, offer learners a choice to um, go beyond what's in that double award. But um, as far as the double award is concerned, we're very clear that that qualification will support progression into um, post-16 into any STEM subjects that learners might be interested in, in pursuing. There are also, of course, other qualifications that are being taken forward in the science and technology area. Um, which are um, to a greater or lesser extent related to science, 
And of course, our proposals would be offering le those learners uh, an opportunity to, to choose to study one of those qualifications alongside science. Lovely, thank you. And I think this has been published, but it was um, going back to your call for practitioners, teachers, education stakeholders to get involved in the co-construction of the next phase. Um, that with the AOLE, we've said we would look to do this out of school time. There was a request from a practitioner teacher here. Would we also consider doing that and to um, support uh, teachers to get involved who are teaching during the day, but would very much like to get involved after and out of school hours? Um, so if I've understood that correctly, Claire, we're talking about the AOLE networks. Yeah, but also for the teachers, so the subject practitioners, Will they able be able to meet outside of school hours? So you know, post three thirty. Um, we are going to try and be as flexible as possible in individual working groups. So looking at the those who are uh, included as members of those groups to discuss what the best times would be to meet. Um, and wherever possible, we will be moving. We'll be holding uh, meetings at times that disrupt the least in terms of people um, being out of school or out of classes. But I think there may be times for those subject level working groups where we will have to have some time um, uh, together meeting and discussing that, that could well be during the school day. But there is flexibility in precisely when we convene those groups um, and we could try and arrange it around the individual members involved, whether there's a day in the week or a time that, that would be less disruptive for them in terms of their other commitments. So we absolutely will try and do it as flexibly as possible. I don't think I can commit to say that all of the work of those groups would be outside of a school day. Yeah, so please get in touch and, and we'll work with you to find what, what works, isn't it? As a note, as an aside on the um, on the AOE network groups, yeah, we're looking for the webinars there to be outside of school hours, but they'll also be recorded. They won't be too long. And so there will be opportunities for people who are on those groups who perhaps missed an opportunity to join live to catch up and and hear what's discussed and keep up with things. Lovely, that's it. I think um, the a lot of the questions that we've answered and then colleagues have also been answering the um, chats as we're going. Um, so I, I think we'll uh, pull the question and answer to a close, Emil, if that's OK. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you, everyone. And if you've got further questions, then please do get in touch. Um, but before you go, I'd like to say a, a huge thank you for attending the English Findings and Decisions webinar on our Qualified for the Future work in preparing for the new curriculum. As Emir said, we're really grateful for your support to date and we look forward to you working with you going forward. We're on this journey together to make sure that qualifications are effective for learners as they can be and prepare them for life, learning and work. A reminder that we'll host a Welsh language webinar tomorrow between 11 and 12. The links are on our website and these slides and the recordings from both webinars will be available on our website um, early next week. And if you want any further information on today's presentation and if you would need any questions um, answered, any further questions or if we've missed your questions, please do email us at reform at qualificationswales.org org as you can see on the slide and please don't forget to sign up for our newsletter where we um, regularly update you on what's happening um, and also do follow us on social media as well um, so have a good day um, and um, and thank you very much and we'll see you in the next uh, webinar